Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Ridge Chapel. It's good to have you here today on this Memorial Day. I do have a couple of announcements I want to make sure you're aware of. First of all, the camp. You, it's still time to register for the youth camp. There's information back there. The Hazes are not here today, but if you need to get a hold of them, we have a phone number. You can call them because they have the registration information and other details that you might want about the camp. But the deadline is June 1st, uh, which is Saturday. Is that right? Something like that. I think it's Saturday, yes. Anyway, see James or Jessica for that, and you can have to do it by phone now. Also, the new calendar is out there, the calendar newsletter thing that uh, uh, we have uh, available every month. And uh, it's uh, only got one, one thing on it that I didn't let her know about in time, but for, in time enough. <laughs> and that has to do with the ladies meeting with at the same time that the men are. So both men and the ladies Bible study meetings or on the 8th this week, or this month, sorry, just this month. Um, June outreach is school supplies. That's in your bulletin. So is the mission, my Pioneer Bible Translators, and the representative will be here for an update on June 16th. That's all the announcements that I have. Let's stand for the call to worship and remain standing, if you would, for the song that we we'll sing afterwards, Star Spangled Banner. Honor the Lord, you heavenly beings. Honor the Lord for his glory and strength. Honor the Lord for the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. From Psalm 29, 1 and 2. Let's sing together. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red flared, the dawn bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled. Banner yet wave. 
prepare for communion this morning, make sure that you have your emblems. They're back there in the back and also in the fellowship hall so that you might participate during the meditation time this morning. <clears throat> Mine eyes have seen the glory. That's him said. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. In the beauty of the living. Christ was born across the sea with the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us live to make men free while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Good morning. After the feeding of the 5,000, the scriptures in Matthew 14, 22 through 31 says, After this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake where he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once, don't be afraid, he said, take courage, I am here. Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you, walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out, reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why do you doubt me? For a couple of minutes, let's talk about the wind, the waves, and the boat. When I was young, and still do, I have a fear of the ocean. I've had it since I was a little boy. I've tried to trace back that fear, so I go back as far as I can remember to age five when we would go on vacation to my uncle's uh, beach house in Galveston. And I guess maybe it was then when I got stung by multiple uh, uh, jellyfish that it created a fear in me. Maybe it was seeing my brother Jeff screaming about 20 yards from shore as he was being stung by a Portuguese man of war and my cousin had to drag him to shore. When we moved to California in Ventura, at age 14, my brother and I tried surfing. <laughs> my brother John was a natural. He was a state champion diver. He had no fear. But I was a little fella. Back in those days, the surfboards were three times my height. <laughs> I couldn't get my arms around the board to carry it, so I had to drag it to the water. <laughs> when I finally paddled out beyond the breakers, I would wait for a wave, but without my glasses, I can't see. <laughs> My brother John would yell, Joe, there's a wave. And I would yell back, where? <laughs> and crash, the wave would hit me. My board would fly in the air. I would fly off. 
And the idea was that when that happened, you were to go down into the wave as far as you can, count to four before you come up so that the surfboard wouldn't hit you in the head. Well, while I was down there counting, the kelp, like rubbery rope, was wrapping around my arms and my legs. I think I would rather have had the surfboard <laughs> hit me in the head than feel that again. I just shudder when I think about that feeling. At age 15, my father uh, and an elder at the church we went to bought a 30-foot Chris Craft cabin cruiser boat. My father liked to take the boat out to the Channel Islands off the coast of Ventura where we would fish for halibut. On one sunny afternoon, he decided to take the boat up the coast because he wanted to get out into the ocean. My sister and myself went with him. It was a beautiful day, glassy ocean, no wind and no waves. However, as we were approaching on our return to the marina, the wind and the waves began to pick up. By the time we reached the entrance to the marina, the swells were six to eight feet high. Wind and wave warning flags had already been raised by the marina master. As we began our entry into the marina with massive rocks on our port side, the left, suddenly a six-foot swell picked up our boat and began surfing us into the marina. We were at a 45 degree angle to the water. The rudder was out of the uh, water. We had absolutely no control and we were headed straight for the rocks of the jetty. My sister was below deck with coloring books. I was standing on the starboard side, the right, holding on as tightly as I could. My father was standing on the port side with his hands firmly on the wheel. I could tell that the wheel was turned all the way to starboard so that when the wave passed under us, the boat would quickly turn away from the rocks. After what seemed like minutes, that wave finally passed under us. But wait, a bigger wave caught us. Now it was an eight-foot wave. This time it turned our small vessel almost perpendicular to the water. I felt as if I were about to, it was about to roll. But I could hear the boat creak, the wood cracking. The back of my head was skimming the surface of the wave as I was all the way down, almost completely in the water. Like Peter, I was absolutely terrified. I looked up at my father at six feet four. He was standing straight and tall, feet firmly planted on the deck floor, wheel held tight all the way to starboard. As I looked up, he looked down at me with a peaceful, calming, and reassuring look on his face. Looking at him, I remember feeling a sense of calmness and peace flow over me. Although I couldn't hear what he said, I could read his lips. Hold on, it's going to be okay. Within seconds, the wave passed under us. The boat turned away from the rocks and we motored to Safe Harbor. A crowd had gathered on the shoreline watching us as the event unfolded and they applauded as we went to the harbor. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Je Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why do you doubt me? I wonder if Peter felt a sense of peace and calmness as he looked into Jesus' face. Jesus reached out his hand and pulled him to safety. Just like Peter, Jesus reaches out his hand to us in order to save us. Even though all of life's turbulent waves, even through all those waves, 
if we could look into his eyes, he might be saying, hold on, it will be okay. So as we remember his sacrifice, as we take this bread and drink this cup, let's remember what he has done for us and how he has given us hope for life in the future. Let's take the bread. And then the cup. And let's pray. Father, we do thank you for sending your son to us so that we can have hope for life ever after. We thank you for his sacrifice, and we pray you will bless us this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. sing this song together. The Lord Almighty reigns. Amen? Amen. He does. People can be dismissed to junior church. As most of you can see, I'm wearing a, a set of glasses, a pair of glasses, a pair, well, anyway, I have glasses on. <laughs> and I'm hoping that I can see better with these glasses on 
as far as the message is concerned. But happy Memorial Day. And I need to turn on the microphone. <laughs> And I believe that it is on now. Is that correct? Yeah. Can you hear me better? I think you muted it. Hold it. Click it again and hold it. Well, the light is on. Yes. And it's muted. Uh, okay, try one more time. Just hold it. I'll add about a second. Just let it on. Try it now. One, two, three, yeah. four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Now you can see why I have trouble with computers and <laughs> televisions and all that. But happy Memorial Day. Uh, I'd like just for my curiosity to ask that everyone here who has served in our military male, female, uh, no matter how long you served or when you served. Uh, well, I want to toss in also, if you're a first responder, um, and that includes policemen and, and those who are in the ambulances and such, if you've been a part of that in your lifetime, would you please stand up? Thank you. Thank you very much. I have a special reason for thanking you all. I know it was before your time, but my parents were prisoners of the Japanese for three years. And the commandant had received orders to separate the men and women, execute the men, and use the women and children as hostages between the firing lines. And 900 men of the 1st Cavalry came charging in under the orders of Douglas MacArthur down through 60 miles of enemy territory, making all the noise they possibly could to make the Japanese think that the entire army was coming. And they did charge right into the civilian prison in Manila and into the military prison, broke down a portion of the wall, and for three weeks fought off the Japanese in the city who tried to retake the prisons until the rest of the army got there. And it was because of the bravery of those men that, well, that I stand here before you. I wasn't with them, but the rest of my family was. Now, it's 3 a.m., on a cold winter day, and patchy snow covers the landscape as loudspeakers overhead blare, telling everyone to get to their places. Surrounded by sandbags and concrete barriers, roughly 10,000 soldiers, airmen, and Marines at Bagram Air Base turned from a deployed city in sleep to a sea of green and tan military awaiting further orders. Some were awakened from their sleep. Others left their duties to attend to more pressing concerns, all focused on the events that were about to unfold. Down the three-mile road of this Afghanistan base, standing shoulder to shoulder 
men and women in arms waited to pay their respects to fallen comrades. Soon the lights of emergency vehicles were seen slowly making their way across the tarmac. Escorts led a flatbed trailer to a waiting C-17 cargo plane on its way back to the United States. On the trailer were three caskets draped in U.S. flags. And as the trailer passed the servicemen and women lining the way, each paid their respects by saluting sharply those who had paid the ultimate price. Once the trailer reached the plane, the formation is dismissed. Thousands of servicemen in the middle of a war zone had just shown respect the best way they knew how. Now, similar ceremonies have been played out in other parts of the world, all to show respect for the sacrifice and dedication of our military servicemen and women. Memorial Day is about remembering these heroes and honoring their sacrifices on our behalf, along with our loved ones who have gone before. Every conflict we've ever been in has, it, has had its share of casualties, often due to the unusual bravery displayed in the midst of combat. Every once in a while, during those conflicts, a soldier does something which is so out of the ordinary that Congress acknowledges that person's efforts by awarding them the Medal of Honor. The deed performed must have been one of self-sacrifice so conspicuous as to clearly distinguish the individual above his comrades and must have involved the risk of life. More often than not, these individuals sacrifice themselves for the lives of others. Now, I have at home the service bar, whatever the ribbon that was awarded to my parents for their service as a civilian. But this Medal of Honor is something very, very special. Now, one such individual was Douglas Monroe. The Medal of Honor was, post, uh, post, was awarded to him after his death. <laughs> Excuse me, my tongue is getting tangled around my teeth. Um, as a result, of his actions on September 27th, 1942. He was a petty officer. Monroe was in charge of 24 Higgins boats. Now, I, have no, I had no idea at all what a Higgins boat were. Some of you probably do. But it's what I always thought of as a landing craft, the kind that the front flops down and off comes the soldiers and uh, whatever else that's inside of that could hold a lot of men. Well, he was in charge of 24 of those, and he was engaged in the risk rescue of a battalion of Marines trapped by Japanese forces at Point Cruz, Guadalcanal, in the earlier days of the war. After making preliminary plans for the evacuation of nearly 500 beleaguered Marines, Monroe, under constant strafing by enemy machine guns on the island, 
and at great risk to his own life, daringly led five of his small boy boats toward the shore. As he neared the beach, he signaled the others to land, and then in order to draw the enemy's fire and protect the heavily loaded boats, he violently placed his boat with its two small 30 caliber guns as a shield between the other boats and the Japanese. When the dangerous task of evacuation was nearly completed, Monroe was killed by enemy fire. But his crew, two of whom were wounded, carried on until the last boat had loaded and cleared the beach. By his outstanding leadership, expert planning, and dauntless devotion to duty, he and his courageous comrades saved the lives of many who would have been killed. He gallantly gave his life for his country. And that's why the decision was made to present <coughs> the Medal of Honor to his family. Now, there are many more such stories, but the picture is clear. Men and women have put their lives at extreme danger for their comrades, and in some cases gave their lives in order that others might live. It seems in every war, without exception, such heroic actions occur, sometimes by individuals you least expect. I have no doubt that each time in the days and weeks that followed, the recipients of such unselfishness were inspired to fight for their wounded or fallen comrades, perhaps with a greater zeal than ever before. I know that my parents and my family have been thankful for those 900 men who charged into our camp, or into my camp where my parents were. It affects much more than just one person. Now, in a small, Middle Eastern country, nearly 2,000 years ago, such a sacrifice also happened. A closer look at the hero reveals some strong similarities to the heroes I just described, but also some significant differences. His name was Jesus the assumed son of Joseph, a carpenter. Raised in Nazareth, the scriptures gave us little to go on about his early life other than the familiar Christmas stories, the visit of the Magi, and the time when he stayed behind in the temple and his parents came to find him. Now, after that, there's a significant jump ahead in time to his adult life and his ministry among both his people, the Jews, and many Gentiles as well. But really, who would have expected such heroic action from this man? I mean, the prophet Isaiah tells us there was nothing about him physically which would have hinted at the possibility of any heroics. Not like we would expect, at least, but he too gave of himself, like so many of the heroes I've mentioned today. 
to begin with, Jesus put himself in harm's way. He endured pain and suffering for the benefit of others. And this was foretold far in advance. We read, Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. And he did it willingly. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Now Matthew records in his gospel, not once, but twice, Jesus responded to the pain and the suffering that he was about to endure with these words to his heavenly Father. Not my will, Father, but yours be done. Now, just as in the case of Petty Officer Monroe, Jesus willingly endured the pain and suffering on behalf of his people to the point of death. Paul wrote, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. And again, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man. Though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, that's one point that we are drive home in our hearts and lives. Well, yeah, we might do sacrifice for somebody we really loved or really know. But while we were sinners, while we turned our back upon God, Christ died for us. Now, it's at this point where our comparison falls short. The men and women of the military put their lives in danger for the sake of their fellow soldiers against other human beings. The battle Christ waged was against something far more powerful and devastating. The ultimate victory was not simply the taking of some important hilltop or body of water, or even one country over another country, but one which secured our very souls, the victory over the power of sin and the devil in our lives, and ultimately victory over death itself. Now in that victory, the sacrifice made by Jesus, like Douglas Monroe, inspired those who witnessed it or heard about it. In his first letter, Peter, one of Jesus, what would we call him, lieutenants uh, of his apostles, if you will, encouraged his readers with the lessons he learned from his commander-in-chief. But, your but in your hearts, set apart 
Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. And then later in that same letter, Peter's words of caution and encouragement speak to us when he says, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And it's still true. You hear from many missionaries of the martyrs that are, well, giving their lives even today because of their faith in God and in Jesus Christ. (coughs) And just this last week of a couple, a young couple, in Haiti, killed by a game. There's so much going on that we, we really don't hear about unless somehow, well, we just hear. And the clearest, most dynamic example of how Christ's life and death and resurrection inspired his people is the fact that we are gathered here today to sing hymns. Hear the word of God read and proclaimed. Offer up our prayers of praise and petition and encourage one another in our faith. Your presence is preaching the message about our faith in Jesus. In spite of the wide assortment of issues that have created problems, the fact remains that America still has the best well-equipped and trained military in the history of the world. Now, it doesn't say the biggest, I'm afraid that the Chinese probably have us well outnumbered in the number of their armed forces. But because of our freedom to innovate, our freedom to choose, to do our best, we're probably the best equipped army in the world, or military in the world. Now, the weaponry we have combined with the technology to use it makes us feel invincible. Well, it used to make us feel invincible under attack until another attack comes to our homeland once again. I guess what I'm saying is, even though we have a mighty military with the best equipment, we're fearful people today because, well, we need to be honest with ourselves that and admit to ourselves that in a world full of terrorist attacks where individuals do not hesitate to give their lives for their particular cause or belief, we will never be totally safe. Jesus says, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, 
famines and pestilence in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. And I'm convinced that some of these events are happening today and will more than likely continue to happen in the future. We ought to notice the signs. But David seems to answer back to this <laughs> gloom and doom with these words. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from my fears. And I am convinced that he can still do that for all of us. Paul also answers, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. But Christians fight a different type of war beyond the physical act of combat. Paul reminds us, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. And in, in his letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6, Paul paint, paints an even more specific and graphic picture when he describes the armor of God's people. Well, that army, armor, combined with a life of steady and regular prayers, will indeed protect us from the temptations that come our way and ultimately preserve us for a life of eternal joy in heaven. The story is told of one soldier who lived with that confidence even as he found himself in the heat of battle. During the Korean War, one man was hurt badly on the battlefield of Heartbreak Ridge. Those who are older remember that name pretty well. His buddies were in a trench about 50 yards away when the man was hit by some sniper fire in an ambush. As the fire continued, the other men discussed among themselves what to do. But since the sniper fire was so intense, to crawl out and bring back that wounded buddy would mean almost certain death for both of them. And so they had to listen to his cries. For a while, no one moved. The men in the foxhole could hear their wounded friend yelling for help. Then one of the men in the trench began to look intensely at his wrist watch. He could not keep his eyes off of it. As the others in the trench noticed this and began to ask questions, but the soldier with the watch remained silent. And then all of a sudden, the man with the watch climbed out of the trench and crawled over to his wounded buddy. He grabbed him by the nape of his neck, collar and very slowly made his way back to the trench. All the while, sniper fire, fire whizzing around. Amazingly, both made it back to the trench without additional injury. After the sniper fire had died, the man who saved his buddy was asked why he waited so long 
to crawl after his wounded friend. Now listen to his answer. He said, my mom said every day at the exact same time she would be praying for me. And according to my watch, I left the trench exactly when she started praying. Well, we could say, well, that's an interesting coincidence. Or was it just a coincidence? We, we may not always receive answers to prayer in such dramatic fashion. And sometimes, even though our prayers may involve physical protection or the sparing of life, they may seem to go unanswered. But we have God's promise that the ultimate victory in this world, the one which guarantees us eternity with him, is ours through our Lord Jesus Christ. As you pray, let me encourage you to remember those who have served and made the sacrifice for the freedom we enjoy today. At at the same time, give thanks to God for Jesus Christ and his willingness to serve his commitment to our spiritual freedom and our eternal salvation. Now I know that we think about those who didn't come home, those whom we loved, buried somewhere, or not even buried possibly, but just missing in action. And our country puts out a lot of effort to try to retrieve every one that's missing and they'll never be able to do so. Even with DNA and all that, they find more and more, but they'll never find them all. And that's one reason why we have the tomb of the unknown soldier. There are so many who sacrificed, but they aren't the only ones who sacrificed. Whatever part of the service, whatever service you performed, it was a sacrifice to be a part of our military. Their pay wasn't all that great. (laughs) Oh, the reward is great. Father, we rejoice in that. And we have the promise that the ultimate victory in this world, the one which guarantees us eternity with him, is ours through our Lord Jesus Christ. So as you pray, let me encourage you once again to remember those who have served and made the sacrifice for the freedoms we enjoy today. And our thanks to God for Jesus Christ. And then be confident in your daily faith battles. Have you heard that phrase before? You see, all day long, every day, I I shouldn't say all day long, But every day we find little battles to test our faith. We have to make decisions. 
give us the confidence to face those daily faith battles, knowing that you are equipped by God to be that faithful warrior who makes a difference in this world around you. The need for military forces will most more than likely never disappear. We will need protection from evil people around the globe to guarantee the rights and privileges we have today. It's through our military forces that we have the luxury of such freedoms on earth. But now listen to me. Only Christ can grant the freedoms from sin that he sac his sacrifice has granted us. Week by week goes by, and I keep extending an invitation. And at times I wonder, well, why don't so-and-so respond? Well, only you know the reason. But I know my response. I love my Lord, and as long as I live, as long as he gives me the opportunity and the ability, I will serve him in some way. I pray that you feel that way. And in this congregation, we'll give you the opportunity if you'll come to make, say, I'm a volunteer, I'll work. Or as a person who's never accepted Christ, oh, that's the greatest thing that you should volunteer to do, to accept him as your Savior and your Lord. If you're already a Christian, having confessed your faith, followed his example in baptism, and now are trying to serve him where you are, if you're here, would you come? The sacrifice has been made. What are you willing to sacrifice? Will you come as we stand and sing? This concludes today's worship service. Thank you for listening. We hope you were encouraged by joining us on Facebook Live. Please message us if you have questions or would like more information. May God bless you and give you His peace.